Good day, everyone, and welcome to ChessCafe.com's podcast. I'm Michael, and I'll be your host today. Remember, at the end of the podcast, we'll provide a coupon number good for an additional discount at ChessCafe.com. Today's podcast is going to present an abridged review of the book titled Pawn Sacrifice by international chess master and author Timothy Taylor. Master Taylor does an excellent job first analyzing and then dividing pawn sacrifices into 12 separate categories based on their particular goal or said purpose. He then dedicates a chapter to each category, providing an in-depth analysis along with many games of masters, grandmasters, and world champions to clarify and illuminate the subject pawn sacrifice. For this podcast, we are only going to concern ourselves with Chapter 4, Pawn Sacrifice for Deflecting. Here a pawn is sacrificed to deflect the enemy away from the main battle. Of the five games presented in this chapter, we've chosen Game 22 between Grandmasters Tal and Benko at the 1959 Candidates Tournament. Okay, let's begin the game. We have uh, Tal in, on the white side and uh, Benko in black. Um, we're not going to get into a lot of the details of the game's tactics and, and strategy, nor the opening uh, comments, uh, because we want to just to get to the parts of the uh, pawn sacrifice uh, for the purpose of deflection. And uh, so I'm going to speed through some of this. Okay, Tull opens with uh, pawn to e4. And Benko, pawn to c5. Tull, knight to f3. Benko, pawn to g6, which is uh, just an indication of the hyper-accelerated dragon. But I'm not going to get into the details of the, of the opening. Tull, pawn to d4. Benko, bishop to g7, Fianchettoing his bishop. White pawn to d5. Black pawn to d6. White knight to c3. Black knight to f6. And then Tull throws a little check in here. Bishop to b5, check. And Benko responds by blocking with his knight uh, on the d7 square. White pawn to a4, and black castles on the king's side, and white does the same. Black pawn to a6, and he is threatening the bishop, and then Tull retreats his bishop to e2. And black rook to b8, white rook to e1, black knight to e8, queenside white bishop to f4, Black knight to c7, kingside bishop to f1, black pawn to b5. He's he's offering to exchange pawns on the b5 square, but Tall has other uh, other ideas for that uh, a pawn, and instead he moves his queen to d2. Black rook to e8, pawn to h3. Black knight to f6, and rook to d1, bringing the rooks together. Black bishop to d7. White pawn to e5. Black pawn to b4. He's threatening the knight here, so Tall retreats, retreats the knight to, to the e4 square. And that, of course, leaves that pawn isolated and unprotected. Black knight captures the knight on e4 and Tall captures back with his rook to e4. Black bishop takes the pawn on a4 and that's the first deflection. He was in a good position to cover both sides of the board, good mobility, and he's moved over to this side of the board where he's off off away from the area that the pressure is building, which is on the king's side with these uh, these pieces here. And he 
he's deflected away his bishop. Now there's another one, there's another deflection coming up, and I'll get to that shortly. Uh, Tull actually takes advantage of this uh, deflection, and you'll see he moves his, his bishop to the uh, h6 square, beginning an attack on the king's side. Benko moves his bishop back to h8. White rook to e1, lining up the rooks. Black pawn to f6. And white pawn to e6. Now that's a very good move. That solidifies this wedge here and restricts black from moving these pieces to the king side to defend the king except through this narrow corridor really. So this is quite a limiting uh, formation here for black. Black moves his pawn to f5, threatening the rook. White moves the rook to h4, backing up the bishop. And here comes the second deflection. He's going to move across the board to the b, b2 square and take this uh, pawn, taking himself away from the area of building pressure. Um, and that's the second deflection. Now we'll finish out the game. Uh, just because it's an interesting game, the way it ends. Uh, Tull moves his bishop to f8. So once again, he's been deflected, and Tull immediately responds by attacking. And he's really sacrificing his bishop to keep the tempo because the rook uh, captures back on f8. And white brings the queen up, which was his intention. And uh, black is running out of options at this point in time. And Rook goes to f7 to block the checkmate, but uh, that's only temporary. Um, the e pawn takes the rook and checks the king. King ca captures back, captures the pawn, but he's in a weak position and uh, not well protected at this point in time. And uh, uh, White takes the pawn, checking the king again. Black brings back the bishop, but that's a little, too, a little too uh, late, and uh, and I don't think there's uh, much else that he can do at this juncture. He's like a boxer on his heels. He's just uh, trying to survive at this point in time. And uh, uh, White brings his rook to the uh, six uh, h six square, and the queen, the black queen, comes in through that narrow corridor to the g8 square, but it's not going to not going to be much help, I'm afraid. White queen takes the takes the pawn on g6, checking the king. Uh, king to f8, and then. Uh, White brings in his knight to the g5 square, which sort of is the last nail in the coffin there. Not much now that uh, Black can do, although he has a few moves he tries here. He moves the, uh, he, he captures the, the pawn on the d5 square, uh, but uh, White moves the rook to h8, checking the king. And at this point in time that uh, Black, uh, uh, Sure comes and resigns. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the game as much as I did. And I certainly hope you'll pick up a copy of the book Pawn Sacrifice. It should be a welcome addition to everyone's chess library. Now, don't forget, in appreciation for all your support, stay tuned for a coupon discount number. Good for an additional discount at chesscafe.com. Thank you and have a pleasant day.